And on this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Wolfbox T10 mirror dash cam. Now this dash cam supports 2.5K recording, has GPS capabilities, parking monitor and parking assistance. So what I wanna do, I wanna first show you what you get inside of this box, then I'll put it in the car so we can look at the actual features in detail. And then finally, I'll show you some actual test drive footage so we can see how well this thing performs both at day and at night. As always, I have placed a link in the description down below for you if you wanna get your own Wolfbox T10 mirror dash cam. Starting with the dash cam itself, we can see that the screen is a full 10 inches in size. Now, I have previously reviewed Wolfbox G840H mirror dash cam, which is a 12 inch dash cam mirror, but some people prefer the smaller size, so I think this is a good option. And you can see on the back that it uses the same mounting mechanism we've seen in the other Wolfbox, which is using the silicone straps. I simply will slide this on top of the existing mirror and we'll attach it with the straps like this and it'll be quite secure. Now, as far as the front camera, I mentioned that it can record in 2.5K and I like this pretty little detail where it does this, it slides out and it does that so we can avoid and get any uh, potential obstacle out of the way. We can also aim the dash cam so we can get the best possible view of the road. And this dash cam supports GPS and they included the GPS antenna for it with a nice long enough cord. And we can put this typically on top of our dash or somewhere where this part faces up towards the sky so we can find the GPS satellites. And to power up the dash cam, they include this cigarette a lighter adapter plug, which has a USB interface and the USB power cable. You could also hardwire the dash cam. And if you wanna do so, I put a link in the description down for you for the hardwire kit. Now, as far as the rear camera, that is capable of 1080 high definition recording and the rear camera is also waterproof so you have a couple of choices this can be mounted internally inside of the car typically by the rear windshield peel the sticky back adhesive and then stick it to the back of the car or include it using the included two screws the second way to do it is to mount this on the outside of the car and that is typically by the license plate area same process peel this and stick this or use the two included screws to mount it into the car. Now the cable length is about 20 feet in length, so that's gonna be sufficient for most cars. So now let's move over to the car so we can see the rest of the features of the Wolfbox T10 mirror dash cam. And here's the Wolfbox T10 mirror dash cam. Notice that when the dash cam is off, it acts and looks like a regular mirror, but once we turn it on, this entire thing is now an LCD touchscreen. We have the time, we have a nice compass in the bottom, including the miles per hour. Now, if I tap the screen on the left-hand side, we can also adjust the brightness. Let's say you're driving out at night and you don't want it to be that bright, but I like to leave mine on max. Even at night, it doesn't really bother me. Also in the main screen, if I wanna change views, I can just slide my finger and now we are looking at the front view. If I slide the finger one more time, then I'm looking at the rear view again. And this is my favorite thing about dash cam mirrors. We can look and see more than what a normal mirror allows. So we can see towards the top, towards the bottom, and same thing with the front. So this is a very large image that's being recorded. Now this dash cam does offer parking guidance, and that means that if your car did not come with a rear view camera with reversing lines, this can help you back up. And they come up whenever you put the car in reverse. <laughs> and we can see here, the view changes, and now we have these little lines to guide us. Now, if you wanted to adjust where those lines fall, you would just move this up and down, and then you can adjust it appropriately. Here's my fall about right there, so this is where I know I have enough clearance. Now, notice when I go back to D, what happens? When I go back to D, now the camera returns to its prior view. So it's a pretty cool feature and it only requires you to connect one extra wire to the reversing tail lights of your car. But let's look at the actual menu options. The first option that we have is resolution. I run this at the maximum resolution, which is 2.5K and the rear at 1080p, but you could lower that if you wanted to, if you wanted to fit more on your memory card parking monitor this is one of those few dash cams that supports parking monitoring without you having to hardwire the dash cam it has an internal battery built in and it will allow the camera to detect a few incidents now they do recommend that if you want to have the full functionality of parking mode which means non-stop continuously because it pulls from your battery from the car 
then you hardwire it. But I think most people are gonna be okay with the parking monitor without a hardwire. Now the G-Sensor option. G-Sensor is how sensitive is the dash cam before it triggers that or it feels that you got into an accident. I like to keep that in low. If I have that set too high, then it thinks I'm getting into accidents left to right. And remember when the camera detects an accident, that's when it locks and saves the video permanently. So if I have set that too high, it's gonna be locking a lot of unnecessary videos. Screensaver option. Now this turns off the actual screen. And what that does is if you want it to be completely stealthy about your dash cam, this looks like a normal mirror, but it's still recording. I like to keep that off because I like to use my mirror as an LCD mirror. I think it looks really cool. And the time and setting, this mirror has a GPS built in. So the time and the dates are set automatically by the GPS. But let's go to the next option, volume. This I have it in mute because if I turn this on, then you get this horrible sound. <laughs> Sounds like I'm dialing an old school phone. So I'm gonna turn that volume setting off. I never like that sound anyways. And you can select a couple of different languages. You can blank out the memory card in one shot if for some reason you wanted to delete all evidence. <laughs> and what's interesting is the upside down or the rear camera. Now this I have not seen in many dash cams. And that means that the rear camera, if you install this upside down, if you have an RB or if you wanted to place it lower in the car but point it up, then you can invert the rear view on the rear so it looks correctly in the front. So that is a good option to have. Now going back to the front menu, there are a couple of options in here that come up. If for some reason you see something interesting, perhaps you see a robbery and the robber didn't hit your car, but you want to capture, you want to save and lock what you just saw. Then you hit the lock button and now the camera knows, ah, something just happened. This is important. I better lock this video and save it for eternity. Now the next option right here that looks like a little microphone allows me to turn off the audio recording. So now our audio is no longer being recorded. So there's no need to whisper. We can tell secrets and nobody's gonna know what they are. But I'm gonna turn the audio back on. I like to keep that on. Now the center one allows us to stop the recording manually. By default, the camera always is gonna turn on and record. That is so you never forget to turn on the recording function, but you can stop it if you wanted to. I'm gonna restart the recording one more time. And the next one that looks like a little camera allows us to take a picture. Perhaps you saw a car in front of you that you liked and you wanted to take a picture of it, or perhaps you wanted to capture a license plate. You can definitely do so. And then you can also view the videos that you have captured directly on the mirror or you can download them to your computer. Now the other interesting thing is that when this is in park mode, if the dash cam detects that somebody hit your car, as soon as you turn your car on, it will let you know there was an incident recorded, you need to review it. Now this is important because not a lot of dash cams offer that. So while they offer parking mode, you don't know unless you're manually checking the dash cam every time you get in the car to see if it got triggered. So I like that they enable that little reminder on there. So now that we saw the features of the 10, uh, T10 Wolfbox LCD mirror, let's go and take it out for a test drive to see how well it performs. And if you guys have any questions regarding the Wolfbox T10 mirror dash cam, please leave that in the comments down below. And remember, I placed a link in the description if you want to get your own mirror dash cam. Now, the 10 inch size, I think it's really great for people who don't want to have the 12 inch, but also 
the 12 inch mirror because it's wider sometimes can conflict with this <laughs> if you don't have enough space to bring it down because you have a 12 inch mirror now all of a sudden you cannot use your visors so i think that's where the 10 inch mirror comes into place and really works now if you want to know if you have enough space it's easy just grab a ruler place it in front of your original mirror and you'll be able to see if the 12 inch will have clearance for your visors to come down or if the 10 inch version will work better also the 10 inch offers a very attractive price over a 12 inch and some people don't like to have a very large mirror so i think this is a good in between well i have a lot more dash cam reviews coming up and other cool gadgets for your car so stay tuned if you find any part of this video helpful please hit the thumbs up button to support the channel thank you guys for watching and as always i'll see you on the next one